The 80s have long been considered a gold mine for cartoons with heavyweight names such as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Thundercats, and DuckTales into Foray. Kids born in this era were clearly fortunate to experience the run of some of the most iconic cartoons in the West. During this time, you needed to give the kids a show with all the action or sci-fi elements to really grab their attention. Swords, beam blasts, huge monsters, intergalactic travels, spaceships, and anthropomorphic characters did the trick. One such cartoon that ticked all the boxes was Silverhawks. Silverhawks, wing it! Several cartoons also experienced premature cancellations due to several reasons. As such, Silverhawks was unfortunately discontinued after one season only. However, we are finally coming out of the tunnel as we can see the light at the end. A Silverhawks reboot! In today's video, we will go over the de little details about the original 1986 show and then get into the upcoming movie that is set to release in the near future. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. The first super androids with the minds of men and the muscles of machines. How it all started and the collapse of the original show. Silverhawks was one of the many phenomenal animated series that enjoyed the spotlight back in the 80s. This 1986 American cartoon was developed by Rankin and Bass Productions, and the animation was under Pacific Animation Corporation, a renowned Japanese studio. Both organizations were involved in developing and animating the predecessor of the Silverhawks, the Thundercats. Interestingly enough, the conception of Silverhawks is tied to that of the Thundercats. In fact, its premise is similar to that of the Thundercats, except for the fact that Silverhawks is a space-based cartoon with alien heroes. The show followed these semi-human beings who fought crime in space. It boasted animation that was ahead of its time and a line of toys that boosted the show's popularity to great heights. The bird-like characters of the show or the squad of the Silverhawks were, in a way, cyborgs, since they were part real and part metal. Of course, they weren't born that way, but were rather technologically enhanced. Their objective in the show was simple, as the good guys they had to take down an interplanetary criminal organization. To say that the story of Silverhawks was the same as that of the Thundercats would be essentially incorrect, primarily because Thundercats Cats revolved around the cats fighting the mutants of Plundar and, of course, Mumra to protect Third Earth. On the other hand, Silverhawks boasts a criminal organization that the 29th Century Squad has been commissioned to take down in order to protect the citizens of the Galaxy of Limbo. This helped Silverhawks gain its own identity as a sci-fi and action series. To get a better understanding of the show, let's dive headfirst into its plot. The Silverhawks were recruited by Commander Stargazer, a bionic policeman, due to a large problem at hand. The escape of Monstar. The antagonist had his own squad with villains and lackeys such as Buzzsaw, Yes Man, Bo Lek Ular, and Mumbo Jumbo, hailing from different galaxies. Monstar himself was an alien mob boss who had escaped imprisonment and, in the face of a battle, could turn into a gigantic creature plated with armor. Thanks to Limbo's Monstar, he was also the one who had overrun the galaxy of Limbo, putting its residents in grave danger. As the Silverhawks were conceived, they were headed by Jonathan. Quick or Quicksilver. Peter Newman was the voice behind the character. Previously, he had lent his voice to Tigra, Bengali, Bonkian, and Wily Cat in Thundercats. Quick used to be the captain of the Interplanetary Force H and was renowned for his quick reflexes with tactical abilities and athletics. He also has Tolly Hawk by his side, who was a cyborg bird. Quicksilver was joined by Lieutenant Colonel Bluegrass with Larry Keeney as the man behind his voice. He was the chief pilot of the Silver Hawks' vehicle, the Mirage, and the squad's second in command. The squad also had their technician and strongman, the twins Emily and Will Hart. Together, they were known as Steel Heart and Steel Will, and they also happened to have real hearts made of stainless steel implanted in them. The two gearheads also shared shared a psychic or empathic bond that allowed one to feel what the other was feeling. The squad was joined by country singing Colonel Bluegrass, who often played his sonic guitar to stay on brand with his name. And finally, there was the Copper Kid, the youngest in the group and the only member who was not from Earth. Kid was from the planet of Mimes and was a mathematical genius. He spoke in whistles and mathematically calculated tones. We also have Commander Stargazer, voiced by Bob McFadden, who had previously lent his voice to Snarf, Slythe, and Linkso in the Thundercats. 
Commander Stargazer was an old cop with bionic abilities. He had imprisoned Monstar several years ago. After it was the Silverhawks' turn to apprehend a criminal, Commander Stargazer began to serve as the intergalactic force's eyes and ears. And finally, we have the main big bad guy himself, Monstar. He was voiced by Mumra's voiced actor Earl Hammond. The villain was a ridiculously rich alien mob boss, possibly a quintillionaire. After being imprisoned by Commander Stargazer, he eventually escaped from his cell, which was resulted in the Silver Hawks' getting commissioned to hunt him down. He often used the beams from Limbo's Moonstar to power himself up. Naturally, he was never the biggest fan of the Silver Hawks. Now, as a cartoon, Silver Hawks did have its fan base. However, it was not a completely original concept, which resulted in it not enjoying the same popularity as its predecessor, the Thundercats. The Thundercats were prematurely discontinued due to reasons ranging from convoluted storylines, created to boost action figure sales, and continued violence in the show, with Silverhawks following a similar formula while not having a similarly strong fan base, the Bionic Heroes did not have the privilege to sustain their position as a long-running cartoon. The show was often overlooked and underrated, making its popularity dwindle over time, and as a result, the show eventually went off the air. Previously cancelled adaptation. The original Silver Hawks ran for 65 episodes before being cancelled. It never had a feature film back then, but with the fan base it had built, there had grown a demand for it. Not too long ago, Comic Books Galaxy had released an article where they stated that Warner Brothers would work on a Silver Hawks movie. The movie was also allegedly supposed to be written and directed by John Favreau. A script had already been written, submitted, and approved. The casting was released with Chris Pratt as Steel Will, Justin Timberlake as Colonel Bluegrass, and Kate Beck and sale as Steelheart. All of this sounded very promising until there was no noise of it ever. Things sounded too good to be true and they actually were since there were no articles to support this news. Even IMDB did not depict any Silverhawk movie being in its pre-production stage but that was not the end of it all. Finally, a live-action Silverhawks movie has been announced. After a long wait, the time has arrived. Silverhawks is returning not as a show, but as a movie. Whether it will be live-action or animation or a hybrid remains unknown, but the fact that the movie will be made is set in stone. A reboot is in development at present, and it is being handled by the Nasal Company. So far, we do not have a release date yet, but what we do know is that the reboot can end up on any streaming platform, primarily because Nacelle has already worked with the major ones. The reboot will also bring to us a new line of action figures. Super 7 partnered with Nacelle for the show to gain rights to the intellectual property and as such will take over the release of the toy line. Thanks, Bluegrass. You know what to do. Release! What could the story in the cast of the movie look like? There's no doubt about the fact that the show will be an intergalactic sci-fi fiesta. In a way, it is great that the show is coming back at a time when technology is advanced enough to make Silverhawks a visually splendid experience. Surely the older fans from the 80s will be the target audience and the primary demographic. However, they will also try to bring in more audience and what better to do it than following a Marvel-style presentation. Kids might not get detailed storylines and plot points as much, but what they do love is visually stunning imagery, and splendid action sequences. Hopefully, a live-action Silverhawks will provide just that. On the other hand, an animated Silverhawks would be the best bet for taking things to the ultimate level. With anime's high popularity at present alongside Western animation getting more serious, an animated movie ensures incredible success. The production schedule for an animated film will also be easier alongside animation, allowing the creative to express their vision as freely as possible. Animating the movie would allow the company to use the original voice act Actors to voice the characters, and this would be great for the nostalgic fans who have been anticipating the revival of the franchise. In the case of a live-action adaptation, several actors have shown their interest in stepping up to become one of the Silverhawks, however, since we do not even know the medium the movie is going to be in, it only makes sense for us to be in the dark when it comes to the casting. And Quicksilver and his space-diving Silverhawks Marvelous Verdict We are eagerly awaiting for our new crumb of information about the movie. Even if they do not wish to reveal the release date anytime soon, with the advanced CGI of this era, we hope the movie gets a good enough budget if it is live action. And if it is indeed going to be animated once again, we once again hope for a collaboration between the United States and Japan, bringing us Japan's detailed art style and stellar visuals with the smoothness and fluidity of Western animation.
If you like the content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.